place for the first time ever. Here we go. My young son lay like X Plane, especially the Org. Hmm. The X Plane 10 blog. Um, we're just going to have a bit of fun today and take my computer apart and install a couple of new components that I just bought for a bargain. So we've got a. Uh, oh my precious. Oh my precious. We've got a new GTX 560Ti uh, GPU graphics card to install. Oh, oh even more, my precious. An OCZ Vertex 2 solid straight state drive, 120 gigabytes. So I'm going to stick most of X Plane on and any other programs that rely on lots of rewrite access and should speed things up quite a lot. This 560 Ti card was a bargain, 259 bucks from um, uh, Computer Parts Land in Melbourne, Victoria, and it is um, pretty close to the equivalent of the 570 which in Melbourne retail is about 360 so I'm getting for about $100 less. It's factory overclocked, which means it's um, been hand-picked for its ability to be out overclocked, so I should handle things a little bit better. And I've got a GTX 275 card in this baby here. Um, GTX 275 bought the whole computer two years ago. But only about today, actually. Uh, two years ago today, it's done really well. It's got a Core i7 first generation 920 CPU, and um, that's doing very well, that's only got about 30%, that's only about 30% less powerful than even the latest uh, 2600K um, i7, so I'm not going to change the CPU for the foreseeable future, but the graphics card is approximately three times more powerful, so hopefully we'll see a, a change. So, I've watched a few videos, not very hard to do this I believe, but of course I'll probably stuff it up totally. I have grounded myself a few times, so I don't have any static on me, that's important. And so we're just going to remove the cover. This cover is disgusting. I've got, I don't know what is on this cover. You probably can't see it on the camera. It's just got two years worth of coffee stains or something. It's pretty bad. Now look at this ridiculous. Got the, you can't even show it yet. The bloody fan, fan wiring is connected to a little point, so I've got to disconnect the fan, so there's the fan, extremely dusty, so one reason why I decided to do it myself was I thought, well, I'll just give it a go and see if I can clean this god awful thing, in fact, 750 watt, tough, tough power, so that lets me overclock a little mildly, I, I go for a 10% overclock, generally, ooh, so that's the big, this is the old 275 card, it's just dusty as hell here, so we'll do a bit of cleaning in a minute. And um, there's a big fat, it's amazing, I haven't seen this before. This is a big fat CPU. Yeah, it needs a good old vacuum, yeah, so we'll check. do that. So I've just opened the case, and it's shocking. I'm really quite surprised how much um, dust and crap is in here. So I've just tried the vacuum cleaner, but it didn't really work very well. So I found my trusty uh, um, AC inflator. We use, in Australia, we have things called beaches. And people, we do it especially in called swimming. Probably most people in England probably wouldn't know about that. But yeah, we, and what we do sometimes we use inflatables. And we, um, lazy people like me, and use one of these electric things. I've got a, a DC one for the car as well. And we inflate our inflatables with a bloody, bloody powerful big bertha. So what I've just been doing is using this in the um, inflate mode, not the deflate mode. And just with these um, CPE fans, I'm even going to go near these. I'm going to do a hand clean here. Each finger fills getting this much, There's like a whole piece of string coming off my finger just for each. And here's the aftermath of my cleaning. <laughs> it's like two years of scalp. Righty, so we've got a pretty clean um, case now. I've just been um, having fun trying to work out how this graphics card comes out. So we've got 
two PCIe connectors that go from the power supply so they get connected up here so I've just pulled these off and then these little buggers here found here I found that if you just pull push it in and then pull it out it loosens up the actual um, fitting so we'll do that with this one here right down here so push in then pull out Use my little pinky to hold my card in case it falls. And then just watch the camera so I can hear. So, is it? Yeah. There. So now this whole side is loose. So you can see. Yes, now I've actually put the computer right on its um, side now because this card's a pretty big card and I had to work at um, <coughs> removing it properly. There's a little tiny lucky thing down here that you have to push in as you pull the card up. So I'll just do that. Yeah. So now it's just coming out out of this slot. So there's two slots for an SLI if you really have to. And just literally put this connector, come and focus, into that slot, flat into the slot. So now I can have a look at the card I've been using for two years. That's it. So it's a GTX 275. A quite a reasonable looking fan there and it's relatively clean in there. Pretty boring looking thing. Incredible piece of tech of course. And here's a lovely um, SSD, some solid state drive. Some boxes. videos where people these do these in unboxing videos. There's a sticker. And they take so much care, it's like, oh, oh look at it. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's just a card, come on. Yeah. Hmm. Caution. Sensitive to electrostatic discharge. And I've read and been told that you one of my mates did this once and it is, so these things are really handy to actually... Look at all this is. Just a thin, incredibly light holder, I think, for a pretty beefy 120 gig SSD. So there's the SATA connectors there. I'm about to find out how to do that. Okay, so since the um, graphics card is out, I can install the um, SSD on this side here. Do that. Do the better off doing the SSD first. And, yeah, and at the back yeah. here, the SATA connect uh, the power cables for the SATA, which is the drive side of things. And I found a spare SATA to motherboard cable, so I'm going to be able to connect that to this baby. And I've also found the drive. So this is the hard drive. This is a, a one terabyte drive in here. Again, I would say small, don't they? Um, so just found now, you just basically tweak these things and pull them out. And you can put your new component in there and then obviously slide it all back into the the hole. So the key thing is to make sure we've got the right connectors at the back. And it's not rocket science. Just carefully place this in. It's got a guide, a, you know, a template to make sure you don't do it the wrong way. So the other side, the other end will go into the motherboard, just like down here. There's, a, there's the return from the um, the other hard drive going back into into the motherboard here. All right, and carrying on some googling later, I found out that the SATA power supplies are very common where they'll have multiple power connectors along the one line, the one serial line. So there's one connector here. There's another connector in there. There's another one that comes up into this hard disk. So the beauty of the SATA regime is, of course, it saves a lot of space. So I've now found I can connect the two. So I'm going to do that. I'll connect it to the back and slide it in. I'm just going to be threading the, um, the SATA data cable through underneath here into this connection area first. So you don't want to know how hard that was to connect this little bugger. 
underneath all of these already fairly high tension cables here so I had to swap the arrangement and just um, put this in first and then connect it up to the drive here next so there's all these cables here they're very tightly packed very neat though it's fantastic for cooling so it's pretty quality reasonable quality for them and so I've just connected the power connector to the back here again a little bit more fiddly than it sounds on paper or when you look at the videos it's pretty fiddly you have to get the tension right so now I'm going to slide it back in right, so I've just slid the um, drive in the SSD in here the wiggling bigger waggling we got through so that's connected in serial that's it there the power is connected because it's going to serial to the uh, SSD and the um, hard drive so that's about it for the uh, SSD up the box now run the instruction manual which I've already read make sure you do that at RTFM one installation disc of course I haven't really told you yet but I've already uninstalled the uh, 275 um, in the hardware options under the control panel under the wonderful windows and yep yeah, installed the driver which of course windows then promptly when I rebooted windows promptly started trying to reinstall the driver for the non-existent car there's the uh, car with two fans. Jeez, that's a bit heavier, heavier. I might, might fill the other car in a minute. And here's some power connectors. I don't know what these are actually. Don't care, don't need them. A mini HDMI cable to normal size adapter, so that'll be handy because this does have HDMI output. This one's noticeably, probably more um, noticeably more solid yet fragile. There's just a feel about it that's out of this world. Oh, look at it. Look at the heat sinks. Pretty heavy. Hmm. I swear this one's a little bit heavier than 275 probably. Yeah, you've got these massive heat sinks. And two fans. Marking up. Wind force 2x or 2 times anti turbulence inclined fins. Wow. Mm -hmm. A standing dual fan design doubles the cooling capacity and offers an extreme silent environment. Gigwright builds up an inclined cooling fan which helps heat, heat helps heats can spread. I don't think they've preferred this well enough. It builds up an inclined cooling fan which helps heat heats can spread effectively from hot areas. Well, it's saying to remove the heat from the hot areas. Uh, one thing I will do though is have a look at the fans. Just look at the working of them. Yes, yeah, so there's there's one little fan here, piddling little thing. And here are the two big mothers. Quite a pathetic little fan thing. I'm sure they would have marketed it as being the best fans available.